horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice than the masked rider of the plains. Courageous and resourceful, he fought crime and criminal throughout the early western United States. No honest settler who appealed to him for help was ever disappointed, and in time he brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. We're heading for Mercer City! Hi, old Silver! Hawaii! Yank Billings, known to the people of Mercer City as Tom Christie, looked up in surprise when the door to his room was suddenly opened without warning. What the? Oh, it's you, huh? Doggone it, Foster. Why can't you knock when you're coming in? You're getting too nervous, Yank. Pull yourself together. Well, I got a right to be jumpy, ain't I? I suppose you and the doc ain't. I suppose... Forget be- that. That isn't why I'm here. Well, what are you here for? Yank, we've got a chance to sell the JX Ranch. We have? Right. The man who wants to buy it's in the parlor this moment. I told him I'd have to speak to you first. Is it a cash deal? It is. Then what are you waiting for? Bring him in here. With the 50000 we can get for the ranch, we can clear out and get so far, nobody will ever find us. Well, that's why I had to speak to you. Hmm? He isn't offering fifty thousand. He's offering thirty. We can take it or leave it. Thirty thousand for the JX? That's his figure. Then tell him to go to blazes. Why why that'd be the same as handing him twenty thousand on a platter. Why should we sell for any such figure? I can think of a number of reasons why we should if you can't. But I t- In the first place, the ranch isn't ours to sell. <laughs> sure not. But we're the only ones around here to know that. Not the only ones. Uh, who else is there? Tom Christie. His wife? Yeah, with the law after both of them. And the Lone Ranger. I'd just like to get my hands on that mess fella sometime. What I wouldn't do to if him... If you have any sense at all, you'll stay as far from him as you can. You'll find it healthier. Yeah. Anyhow, with Christie's credentials in my possession, I picked you up and introduced you here under his name. That makes you equally guilty with me. I know how deep I am in this without your telling me. Sometimes you need to be reminded. As for English... Well, he knows what's in store for him if the law ever discovers he attempted to poison Mrs. Christie when she followed us here. What's all this palaver for? Why don't you get to the point? I'm just trying to show you why any offer made us is worth accepting. 30000 even if it isn't the full value of the ranch, is better than risking exposure and hanging. Well, maybe so. But... If you had intelligence, I wouldn't have to explain all this. You'd be able to see it for yourself. I'm going out there and telling Larson that you'll accept his offer. You're the boss, if that's the way you want it. That's the way I do want it. And try to remember when I bring him in here that you're supposed to be a rancher. When he calls you Christy, answer to it. Don't gape as though you never heard the name before. Kind of uppity today, ain't you? I'm tired of having everything go wrong. If you spoil things now that we've got a chance to collect our profit, 
Well, I'll guarantee you'll regret it for a good long time. Now, bring the fella in here and shut your gab. I will. Don't forget anything I've told you. You ought to spend more time worrying about yourself making mistakes and less about other fellas. Mr. Larson? You talk with him, Mr. Foster? What do you say? I think you'll find him agreeable to your proposition, Larson. Of course, you understand that the price you're offering will mean a sacrifice on Mr. Christie's part. But it's cash money, mister. Well, that's what persuaded him. He, uh... Well, for certain reasons we won't discuss, Mr. Christie's in need of cash just now. Well, uh, when can I see him? He's waiting for you. Come with me. Stranger here, ain't he? Yes. His home and mine are both in Texas. Thought I heard something of that sort. Mr. Christie, a pleasant fellow to deal with? <laughs> well, I'm afraid you'll have to judge that for yourself. This is his room. This is the man I spoke to you about, Mr. Christie. He, uh... There ain't nobody here. What the... You having a joke with me, are you? What? He was here just a moment ago. I don't understand. The window's open. You don't figure the idea of talking business with me scared him so much he snuck out, do you? Oh, nonsense. He must be somewhere around. I'll see if I... Who's that? The mask man. Huh? The Lone Ranger. That's where he's gone. <laughs> Otto was waiting when, an hour later, the masked man arrived at their secret camp with his prisoner. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, blazes, you... Get down and keep still. Yeah. Yeah, one of these days, mister, you're going to meddle in my affairs just once too often. Yeah, once too often for the safety of your neck, Yank. Yeah. I think you know why I took you prisoner. Because you can't keep your nose out of other folks' affairs. Foster had arranged to sell the JX ranch. What's that to you? That ranch belongs to Tom Christie, and Tom's my friend. I don't mean to see it stolen from him. The law's after him, so he and that woman of his don't even dare show their faces. Thanks to you and Foster. And what are you going to do about it? A number of things, Yank. But first of all, I'm making sure that ranch can't be sold. In town, they think you're Tom Christie. No sale can go through without your signature. As long as you're my prisoner, you won't be able to sign your name to anything. Go to places. Cutter. Uh -huh. Are you ready to leave? Have you packed supplies enough for the trip? Uh, me ready. Then you better be, uh, get going. You have a long trip ahead of you. Uh, here, Scout. Hey, where are you sending them? To Texas, to be exact, to San Carlos. What for? At Tom Christie's home. Sheriff Price there happens to be another friend of Tom's. I think when Tonto tells him the trouble Tom's in, he'll be glad to return with Tonto and clear it up. Mister, you got any notion how long it'll take that redskin to get to San Carlos and back? A month, perhaps. Yes, so. And if you think you or anybody else can hold me prisoner for a month, you're loco. We'll see about that. Ready, Tonto? Uh, me ready. Then on your way. And don't return without Sheriff Price. Oh, me bring him. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. <laughs> Stranger, by the time that engine gets back, I'll be long gone from here. Just wait and see. We'll wait, Yank. And while we're waiting... You'd better make yourself comfortable. I don't think you'll find waiting pleasant, so you'd be wise to make it as easy for yourself as you can. In the meantime, accompanied by Larson, Foster had lost no time in reporting Yank's disappearance to the sheriff and... Lem, that masked man has to be caught. Do you realize what this means to you? Why, he's made a fool of you. Just as though he were to publicly state the law in Mercer County doesn't amount to a hill of beans. This isn't the first time he's done something like this in your county either. You think I can't handle him, Mr. Foster? You think I'll let him or any other outlaw get away with a stunt like this? I don't know. You didn't do much the time he took away that woman claiming to be Mrs. Christie just when she was about to be jailed. Hmm. Well, that was different. Well, I don't see the difference. You'll hunt that fellow down, Sheriff? You bet I will. Your name Larson? Mm hmm. Well, just what's your interest in this? Mr. Larson hoped to buy the JX Ranch. Until Mr. Christie is brought back, of course, that's impossible. Oh. Well, what are you sitting there for? You're going to get on this trail, aren't you? Sure, I'll get... S Sheriff Shelley? B by gravy. What? Sheriff, that's the man or woman I just mentioned. This man's Yank Billings. Arrest them both. I got you covered. Get your hands up. The gun isn't necessary, Sheriff. You don't think my wife and I would come here voluntarily if we meant to make trouble, do you? Huh? She your wife? I am. My name's Tom Christie. Christie nothing. Sheriff, I tell you, this man's Yank Billings. He escaped hanging in Dodge City less than two weeks ago. Foster. Well? I trusted you once. Because I trusted you, my property here has been stolen by an imposter. And the lives of myself and my wife put in danger. You'll pay for that, Foster. As surely as I'm standing here, you'll pay for it. Lem, do you believe this nonsense? They ain't putting nothing over on me, Mr. Foster. I met up with a woman of four. Ma'am, 
I recollect how it was proved once already that you weren't what you claimed to be. And I've already told you once that your so-called proof was false. Yeah? Well, there's other folks that think different, including myself. And there's plenty of folks around here that think you had something to do with Sheriff Muncy's killing. Sheriff, be careful how you speak to my wife. And you be careful, mister, how you talk up to the law. I didn't come here to talk up to you. We didn't come here to argue at all. We came here to surrender ourselves. Mind if I ask you a question, mister? That depends on the question. Well, I... Been listening to what the sheriff and Mr. Foster here have been saying about you. Seems to me for a fellow in your position, turning yourself in is a mighty risky business. I was just kind of wondering what made you do it. We were asked to. Huh? By a man we trust. And who might that be? The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? A likely story. But true, Sheriff. He promised he'd clear us and prove our identities. In the meantime, he said it might be better if we gave ourselves up and not try to continue hiding from the law. We took his advice. <laughs> Which same, I'm right grateful you did, mister. Yes? But you've made one bad mistake. You think so? You met up with a masked man and you done what he told you. But you'll learn that every masked hombre you meet ain't that there Lone Ranger fella. Oh? And this one you're speaking of is less likely to be than most others. That remains to be seen. I know one thing, however. Lone Ranger or not, my wife and I know that he'll help us. little more than two weeks passed. Tom Christie and his wife did not lose confidence, but the same could not be said of Foster, as the days passed and no clue to the disappearance of Yank Billings was found. One day, he was sitting in the cafe with Dr. English and... English, I wish I could make up my mind what to do. I, I don't like this, Foster. I think we should clear out. Perhaps. How do we know that that masked man isn't bringing witnesses from Texas right now? What if they walk in on us without warning? What do we do then? <laughs> yeah, that's easy. Hang. The game's up, I tell you, Foster. There's just one thing for us to do. Clear out and save our hides. If it ever comes out that you hired me to poison Mrs. Christie when she was supposed to be my patient, Your I... position is no worse than mine. I know, I know. How much money have you? Why? Enough to travel far? Enough after you get wherever you're going to keep you until you get established again? You know I haven't. Precisely. Neither have I. And that fellow Larson is still in town waiting to buy the ranch if Yank is found. $30,000 for us English. We can only put that sale through. Enough to get us as far as we'll ever need to go. It's a lot of money. And worth taking some risk for, in my opinion. Well, how much longer do you think it will be safe to stay here? Well, I couldn't even make a guess. What luck has the sheriff had tracing that masked man? None at all. You think Yank is with him? He must be. Where else could he be? If there was just something to go on, some way we could find where Yank was hidden, we could get him back here, sell the ranch, Hold then... it. What? Wait a moment. Then look around. That fellow standing at the end of the bar toward the street. He just came in. When you look, tell me if he reminds you of anyone. Is he looking this way now? No, it's safe. Hmm. There's something familiar about the fellow. I... Can't seem to please him, though. You know who he reminds me of? Who? Imagine how he'd look if he were wearing a mask. You mean... Exactly. If that isn't the Lone Ranger, then my name's not Foster. But the mask... He's been known to leave his mask behind and use a disguise. Look at the way he stands. The set of his shoulders. There, watch him now. He's walking toward the other end of the bar. There's only one man who handles himself like that, English. And that's the Lone Ranger. Foster... You stay here and keep an eye on him. I'll get the sheriff. No. Yes, but I... Get the sheriff out of this. What happens if this fellow refuses to talk after he's arrested? We'd make him talk. We wouldn't. I know him better than that. Do you mean to say we're just to let the fellow walk out of here when he can tell us where Yank is? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh, I do. You're out of your mind. No, I'm using it. But I... He hasn't seen this English. If you don't attract attention to us, he won't. What have you got in mind? When he leaves, we follow. Yes, and he'll either lead us to his camp and Yank, or he never had anything to do with Yank's disappearance in the first place. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The man Foster and Dr. English had noticed in the cafe was the Lone Ranger. Leaving the cafe a few minutes later, he made his way toward the edge of town in a grove of trees where he mounted Silver and rode off, while Foster and English followed at a safe distance. It was an hour later that the Lone Ranger drew rein at his camp. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Yep. <sighs> How are those ropes, Yank? Too tight? Not half as tight as a rope's going to feel around your blasted neck someday. Here, I'll loosen them a little, but don't think you'll be able to work free. You're going to take them off of me? I'm sorry. If I was staying here, I would. But I have an errand to do. I'm leaving again right away. I just came back to see how you were getting along. Then get out. Leave me be. Gladly. Here, Silver. Hey, wait. How long are you going to be gone? I'm not sure. Why? I'm going to be hungry for long. That's why. And I don't like you riding away, leaving me tied up like this. What if something was to happen to you and I weren't never found? I'd starve to death, that's what. It ain't right. If that you... happened, it wouldn't be any more than you deserve. Well, but you... don't worry about it. It won't happen. Hip. Uh, adios. Come on, Silver. Come on, old fellow. Blessed his rotten hide. I'd like to get him where I wanted him just once. Just once is all I'd ask. And if I didn't make him all fired, sorry for... Who called my name? Keep your voice down, you fool. Come along, English. Safe. Mask man's gone. He would have be away from here before he gets back. Doc. Foster. What? In Quiet. The... English, give me your knife. Here. But how'd you fellas find me? Did you just happen along? We'll what? talk when I've cut these ropes. <laughs> how soon will the mask man return? I don't know, but we got a little time, I reckon. <laughs> English and I recognized him in town. That's how we got here. We followed without his suspecting. I was pretty sure we'd find you at his camp. Oh, gosh. You don't know how glad I am you fellas showed up. Listen, I... you can tell us all that later. Right now, there's other things we want to know more. What's he been doing? Has he spoken of his plans? He's fixing to spoil our whole game. Yes? You recollect that redskin part of his? I do. Well, he sent him to Texas. Told him to bring back the sheriff from San Carlos. When they get back, if we ain't going from here, we're done for. How's the Indian traveling? My horse. When did he leave? The same day that mess fella caught me. I was right here when he gave the engine his orders. Hmm. That was about 16 days ago. It seems more like a month to me. 16 days. It'd take him two weeks at least just to travel one way. Yeah, I reckon it would. In other words, if the sheriff returns with the Indian, we have almost another two weeks' margin to go on. Even if the sheriff doesn't, if he comes by train and stage, we can count on at least one week. Sure, but why should we? Why not make tracks away from here right now? You're forgetting Larson. He's still in town? He is. <laughs> With $30,000 that we badly need. And he still wants to buy? Why else would he have waited? Then let's get going. Right. Let's get that cash and then make tracks. Come on. It was the middle of the afternoon when Larson, standing at the bar in the cafe, heard his name called. Larson? Huh? Oh, howdy, Mr. Foster. Glad to see you. Join me in a drink? Well, not now. I've got news that won't wait. News you'll be glad to hear. Is that a fact? We've found Mr. Christie. You have? He's at home right now. And he's still willing to sell at your price. Well, I'd like to hear more about this. Oh, uh, was that masked fellow you was telling me about caught? No, but you can depend upon it he will be. Well, I should think he ought to be. Imagine him being allowed to get away with kidnapping a fine fellow like Mr. Christie. How is he? Was he hurt or anything? Oh, he's quite all right. But if you don't mind, Larson, I'd... I'll have to take him back an answer. Huh? An answer to what? Well, I'm speaking of your purchase of the ranch, of course. You still want to buy, don't you? Oh, sure. For 30000 Well, I couldn't hardly expect Mr. Christie to be willing to sell for any less. How soon can you have the money ready? You in a real big rush? Well, uh, that is... Oh, I... shucks, it don't matter. Today or tomorrow or a week from tomorrow don't make no difference. It's all the same to me. Then you could have the cash ready today. Mm-hmm. Splendid. Mr. Christie would be glad to know it. I'll have the papers drawn up, witnesses ready, and all in order to complete the sale if you call at Christie's place this evening. Is it agreed? If you want it that way, sure. We'll expect you around eight. I'll be there. And then you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Larson. I'll have a lot to do between now and then. But believe me, you're getting a bargain you'll never regret.
That evening, shortly before the time set by Foster for the sale of the JX Ranch to Larson, Lem Shilley, the sheriff, received a surprise visitor in his office. Good evening, Lem. Well, all the blasted nerve. You don't sound as though you'd expected to see me. I didn't, but now that you're here, by great... No, you don't. Well, talk on. Where'd anybody ever learn to draw like that? I'm putting my guns back, Lem, but I think you get the idea. You dirty crooker. Didn't Tom Christie and his wife tell you I promised to clear them? You mean them crooks I got in jail here? I imagine we mean the same people. They're not crooked, however. Don't you try to tell me I didn't say I was helping them. My coming here shouldn't surprise you. I always try to keep my promises. Just what are you up to? Those are the keys to the cells on your desk there? You're trying the same stunt I hear tell you pulled at Dodge City. You're going to break them crooks free. With your help. Pick up those keys. Go to blazes. This isn't the time to be stubborn. I'll tell you just once more. Pick them up. Blast you. Now walk ahead of me to their cell. Don't make a move. Because I'll be ready for anything you might try. I said you was going to try that Dodge City stunt. This time with one difference. Huh? You're going with us when we leave. Say, you can't get away with kidnapping the law. It happens to be the only way I can make you learn the truth of the situation in spite of yourself. Hey, hey look here. It's the masked man. We knew you'd come. The sheriff's going to unlock your door and let you out. When he does, you'd better take his guns, Tom, and relieve him of a temptation he might regret later. <laughs> Glad to. You can have your fun now. Mine will come after. Not unless you get pleasure in admitting a mistake, Lem. Unlock that door. Ah. Come out, Tom. You too, Mrs. Christie. Now what are you doing? Get outside. I have horses waiting. Come on, Beth. Go ahead, Sheriff. You can't. And you've done enough talking for the present. From now on, follow orders and keep still. Later that evening, when Larson arrived at the house occupied by Foster and the man claiming to be Tom Christie, he was admitted at once. Come in, come in. Thank you. Let's see, I don't think you've met Mr. Christie, have you? No. The day I expected to, he plumb disappeared. (laughs) Sure did, didn't I? Well, howdy. Glad to know you. You've met Dr. English, of course. Oh, sure. Good evening, Larson. We've asked him here to serve as one of the two witnesses we'll need. We have a man here working for us who will be the other. All set to do business, ain't you? You bet we are. You got that cash with you? I'm just as ready as you are. Let me see. Them the papers there on the table? That's right. I think you'll find them all in order. Hmm, appear to be. Now then, Mr. Larson, if you'll just satisfy us that you have the money with you. Oh, there ain't that big a hurry, is there? You wouldn't mind my sitting for a spell, would you? No, but... uh, A mighty comfortable place you got here. This your property too, Mr. Christie, or... You're just renting while you're in town. Why, uh... I'm afraid I must not have made myself very clear, Mr. Larson. I should have told you that we're quite anxious to get this matter cleaned up as quickly as possible. You see, we haven't. Oh, I'll be ready in a minute or two. But is there any objection to completing the sale now? Just one. But if there's anything you want, just I'm waiting for witnesses of my own. It ain't fair for all the witnesses to be your witnesses. (laughs) Suppose you're joking. No, I ain't joking. But surely you understand that only two witnesses are necessary. And as for our providing them, that's merely a matter of form. If we'd known you... I'll wait. See here, what's this all about? What's this stalling for? If I thought for one second that you was up to something, I'd bring... Who, me? Yeah, by thunder, you! Mr. Christie doesn't mean just that, Mr. Larson, but after all... I don't, are... huh? Well, you just bet I mean it. I don't know about the rest of you, but this looks funny to me. If he really wanted to buy, why wouldn't he hand over the cash and be done with it? Careful. I'm tired of fooling. I'm tired of staying in a town I want to get out of. Now, look here, mister. You aim to buy her, don't you? There's no hurry. Why, blast you! What you the... fool? What do you think you're doing? I'm using my head, which is something the rest of you ain't doing. I'm going through his pockets. If he ain't got no cash on him, this is just a trick. But you can't go through. And if he has got the cash on him, then we're taking it and making tracks. What's to prevent it? The law won't be after us. The us for this any more than it would be for other things. What's it? Someone's stopping outside. If anything's gone wrong. I'll bet it has. Blast you and your schemes. I bet we're trapped right now. You are. Come here, fella. Shoot your way past him. Everyone here, stand right where he is. Well, you know what to do, Lem. Arrest these men. Only one of you make a move. If you do, I'll have to blast you. What's the meaning of this? Lem, if you've gone crazy, you can't arrest us. Oh, you think you can't be arrested, huh, Foster? Price. Sheriff Price. Right. You... I never thought you'd get here this fast. All the way from Texas, I... Thought it'd be another week at the very least. (laughs) 
So he did fall for the masked man's trick. Trick? What trick? You help me, Yank. Me? You're loco. I never. I wouldn't be fooled by no trick of yours or anybody else's. Remember the day I captured you and took you to my camp? Sure. And you recall the instructions I gave Tonto to ride to Texas and bring Sheriff Price back with him? What about it? That had been arranged beforehand. Tonto rode only as far as the railroad and sent a message to Sheriff Price by telegraph. But we had to keep you here until Price could arrive. So we made you think it would take twice as long as it actually did. Why, you... And you told us you knew the masked man's plans. You got this into this, Yank? No, listen... You fool. Foster, neither you nor English can boast. You were tricked as thoroughly as Yank was. What are you talking about? <laughs> sure. That's where I came in. Pretended to want to buy the JX Ranch for minute and ready cash. The masked fella didn't want you lighting out when Yank turned up missing, so he had me dangle some cash in front of you. Just to keep you on hand. <laughs> Funniest thing I ever seen. You knew doggone well you ought to be beaten it away from here, but you were so darned anxious to get that 30,000 first that you couldn't get started. Eh, that shows whether you was any smarter than me, in spite of all the years you was giving yourself. Don't talk to me like that. I'll talk to you anyway. I please, you pig headed idiot. Boy, you here, 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 here. break it up. Uh, you can fight it out in jail. Now get moving. I demand to know with what I'm charged. Oh, you do, huh? Well, as long as Sheriff Price vouches for them folks being Mr. and Mrs. Christie like they always claimed they was, why, I reckon their testimony could be taken in evidence. I don't see and what... that being the case, you and your pards here will be charged with everything in the book and a heap besides. And it'll all add up to a hanging. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.